Welcome to the Teen Life Podcast, where we believe that teenagers are not a problem to be solved, but we are here to help you equip teenagers through the power of connection. I'm Carly Duke, and I'm here with Chris Roby. Hey, guys. So, Chris, it's been two weeks now, but we had something really exciting happen for Teen Life just a couple weeks ago. And mm-hmm. I wanted to use that because it was such an incredible night to launch us into our podcast discussion today. So do you want to take a second to talk about our dinner? Yeah. So every year Teen Life has an uh, annual fundraising dinner locally here in Fort Worth. Uh, we raised a lot of money, which was great, obviously, but we also had the chance to uh, hear a lot of stories from students and from facilitators and counselors uh, just about the power of coming to a table and belonging to something, right? Mm-hmm. I think we take for granted a lot of times that teenagers, you know, even though they're so connected via social media, are, are generally pretty lonely mm-hmm. uh, and, and, and seeking somewhere to belong where they're, they could be who they are. And there's just not many safe places like that. And, and, and within our support groups, we're really finding that's, you know, that norm is you belong here and this is Mm -hmm. your group and you get to come and be exactly who you are. And there's so much power in that. And we get to share that and um, really get a lot of blessings from that. And I'll be honest with you, Carly, I'm still recovering. (laughs) It was such a, (laughs) such a big night, (laughs) even weeks away. I'm still kind of feeling the good effects, right? Yeah, exactly. And as Chris said, we talked about at this dinner, we use the theme, welcome to the table. And I feel like it really connected with our audience, this idea that you're welcomed for who you are, no matter what. And that's what Mm -hmm. teen life does. But I wanted to talk about it in general, too, because everyone listening might not have a teen life group at your school or your student might not have access to one. And so I wanted to talk about how can we create belonging in the places where we already are, because it's Mm -hmm. really important. Right, right. And if you don't really believe that, I mean, just think about a time where you didn't feel like you had somewhere Mm -hmm. that you belonged and just that, you know, and it probably is around your teenage years, you know, Um, because really, you know, developmentally, that's what they're going through is, 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 you know, asking that question, who am I? And when you're asking that question, um, what comes with that is, you know, I just, I don't know where I belong or, or where I fit in. And, um, it's hard to, it's hard to feel really healthy or like you're, you're getting anywhere when you're feeling that way. And so this mm-hmm. is a super important discussion. Yeah. So, you know, I'm bringing some research, Chris, oh, yeah. because I think anecdotally, we know that this is true, that belonging matters, but the American Academy of Pediatrics did this study from 2019 that I found. And it said that I'm just going to read a little bit of it because I'll be honest, I looked at the whole thing and it is difficult to understand, but I will post a link Mm. if you like that kind of stuff. Did you glaze over a little bit? Maybe a little bit, but really cool stuff. But just one piece of it said family and school connectedness may have long lasting protective effects across multiple health outcomes related to mental health, violence, sexual behavior, and substance abuse, increasing both family and school connectedness during adolescence has the potential to promote overall health in adulthood. Wow. So this idea of belonging and feeling connected protects teenagers, but then it also carries over into when they're adults and can make a huge difference. And so just this idea that this isn't just something that feels good or can make school better, but this could impact your teenager. I mean, throughout their entire life. And so it's important. And so I looked up the Webster, Merriam-Webster dictionary definition of belonging, and it is a close or intimate relationship. Hmm. I also like will kind of add in, I feel personally like it's this feeling like you're part of something. Yeah, it's a, it's a human trait, right? And, Mm -hmm. you know, another place that I've seen this bear out and I'll have you link this in the show notes as well. Um, one of the pieces of research we've done with teen life is around this idea of uh, it's a, it's a UCLA study where they, it's, it's really kind of talking about the school to prison pipeline. Mm-hmm. Um, and they say one of the key places where kids 
really um, start taking that direction towards institutional, you know, prison or, or, or being it, it's is suspension and being expelled. So basically, the, what they found was when uh, a student is uh, suspended for the first time, their likelihood of dropping out doubles. Hmm. And so it's this idea of removing them from the thing they feel like they belong to as a disciplinary right. measure. Right. And that's, that, that's, that's always been the traditional world. You know, if you get in a certain amount of trouble, then you have to go somewhere else. Right. Mm-hmm. And so there's these long lasting consequences. That's, that's not what this podcast is about, you know, in particular, but it does get to that root of when you feel like you belong somewhere, you know, your school, your class, your, your classmates, whatever that is, and you're removed from it and, and you can't be around it anymore. It has those long lasting effects. You'll likely drop out. You'll likely get into a place that you don't want to be when you're removed. Mm-hmm. And so this does have long lasting implications for sure. When I think we see the power of belonging in our teen life support groups, because When I talk about teen life, I often say I grew up as a youth minister's kid. So I was Mm -hmm. part of small groups. I had adults that loved me and poured into me. But the more I do groups with teenagers, especially on public school campuses, I see they've never had that. Mm -hmm. Some of these teenagers have never sat in a group where they could talk and be themselves and feel like they're accepted. Some teenagers outside of their parents have never had an adult say, hey, I believe in you and I'm going to show up for you and I'm going to be there for you. Mm -hmm. And so this idea of belonging is really powerful. And a couple years ago, I had a group of all middle school girls. And it's one of my favorite stories because there was, this sounds weird, but almost a dividing line of like, there seemed to be like the popular girls in this group. And then I had a few girls who were quieter. And they didn't seem to mesh the whole group. And then the last one, one of, now I say popular because that's what the other girls called her. Like there was a week that she wasn't Mm. there and they were like, oh, she's popular. I'm not making that distinction. But she said how insecure she feels at school because this was her first year. And so even though she was outgoing and bubbly, she had insecurity And didn't feel like she belonged yet. And it was really powerful to see all these quieter girls go, we'll be your friend. We think you're awesome. We think you're beautiful. And I know. And they all stepped up and were like, no, you belong and you belong with us. And it was just a really sweet relationship to see when it clicks of, no, I do have a place I belong. And I do have people who are going to look out for me and make sure that I'm okay. Um, Chris, you talked before we even started recording about an instance in one of your recent groups too, where you kind of felt this. Yeah. Belong, belonging kind of, you know, belonging starts with connection, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, when you're able to connect with someone, you're, you, that trust is built and you're, you feel like you can, you know, let people in. And I had a group just last week where I um, had a, a new girl who, she shared as we got started, we do a check-in at the beginning of our group to kind of see how things are going. And she shared that she had a, uh, her baby sister infant um, had been in the, in the NICU at our local hospital and had just been released. Um, And there, and it was kind of breathing issues and probably a, a, probably a premature um, birth. And I was able to connect with her that I, we, we went through the same thing with my oldest son um, and he had breathing issues and was in the NICU. And I told her, I was like, you know what? I, I hate that you went through that because I know how horrible that is, how horrible, yeah. how horrible that feels. And so halfway through a group, she got up and left and asked if she could step out and the counselor followed her out and they came back in and finished group and she was fine. Um, and I asked the counselor afterwards, like, Hey, what, what happened here? And she said, well, um, she was overcome with emotion because she realized that other people were dealing with the same things that she was. Hmm. Um, and you know, a lot of the kids had shared just some other things that were going on. So obviously there was, there's some emotional connections based upon right. kind of sameness that like we're dealing with a lot of the same things. And she wasn't sad. It just hit her, you know, it just hmm. kind of hit, hit her in that way where she had to kind of gather herself and come back in. And she, that's where she wanted to be. Obviously she wasn't, mad or sad or anything, but, um, it just reminded me about how, when you're, when you're feeling bad, when you're hurting, how isolating that feels, Mm -hmm. you know, and 
when, especially when you don't when you don't feel like you belong anywhere how isolating that doesn't how how powerful it is just to feel like you have a place that you can step up and say i can be who i am and i'm not going to get judged um, because you know the one-way interaction of social media is just all judging it's all it's all i'm 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 bad. I'm not, I don't measure up that kind of stuff. You can't, you, you can't feel like you belong somewhere. You feel like you don't measure up. Right. Right. And so that's where the power is in this. Yeah. And I, I think as we talk about teen life groups, as I said, I think that's a powerful way for students to feel like they belong, especially on a school campus. But I want to talk about what we can do for students who aren't in a teen life group. And Mm -hmm. even what we can do at school and also what we can do at home, because that study that I mentioned at the beginning said it's both. It's school Mm -hmm. and family. And so I think one of the first things is that encouraging connection outside of like just your typical interaction. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if a student maybe is new to school, making friends at school is great, but they're probably not necessarily going to feel like they belong until they see those friends outside of school until they Mm -hmm. start to make memories and feel like they're a part of that. And so encouraging students to be in other activities outside of just classwork, um, maybe enjoying like participating on a team or serving together or inviting friends over after school to be together, something like that. It can be really small. Um, And then even for your families, I think like memories are some of the easiest ways to feel like you belong. Hmm. Like I feel like sometimes that perpetuates. That's why like in teen life support groups, we do activities together. And so as a family, it's fall. Come up with some fun fall activities for your family to do. Go on vacation. Make sure you're serving together. We've talked about before the power of putting your phone down to Mm -hmm. make sure that they feel like they belong. And so just kind of being intentional about what you do together to make sure that they feel like they are a part of something and aren't just like, well, I'm the parent, you're the kid. Or I'm the teacher and you're the student, but let's see, yeah. what can we do to make that? A and a lot of times, uh, and a lot of times this, uh, those activities you talk about are the ones that you didn't expect to really hit. Right. Mm. And I, I think about the vacation that we went on this last summer, we went to California to go to some ballparks, but the part that my kids remember the most is whenever we pulled off to the side of the road, cause we saw some squirrels. <laughs> And we spent, uh, or like groundhogs, I think is what it was. Um, and, and we, we spent like an hour feeding them and like, you know, it, with this, that wasn't planned. It was just kind of along the side of the road. And a lot of times it's, it is those, um, connections that we didn't plan, but right. it was because we were together. Yeah. I also think it's important for students to connect to peers So kids are their own age, but also making sure that you're connecting them to adults Mm -hmm. as well. And so hear me say, if you're a teacher or counselor, work in a school, your influence matters Mm -hmm. and making sure you're connecting to students. I know you can't connect with everyone in your classes, but pick one or two a week that you're going to be intentional with that week. And then if you're a parent, making sure that you are being intentional about who can I connect my student to that can be a resource that I trust and that I feel like could have some influence in their life and just make sure, I think we want them to belong at home, but making sure they feel like they belong other places is important too. So like try to find as many different places as your student can belong. I know this is random, but when I went to college, someone told me make a ton of friends at the beginning And that way, when you find out who people really are, you have more options. Mm. So kind of not just like narrowing down of if they only have one friend and something happens with that friendship, then that belonging is gone. And so give them lots and lots of places to belong. Now for the tip this week, Chris, we are coming up on Halloween. And I like Halloween. I wouldn't say I'm a huge Halloween fan. And we, uh oh, what's I, that? Yeah, I, I'm a. I, I, I like I like the weather change, and it's yeah. it's it's fun. But yeah, it's not. I'm, I'm a I'm bigger Thanksgiving fan. We've talked about that before. Yeah, true, true, true. Well, I think last year we even talked about some Halloween costumes, but it's a new year. There are new fads, and so I wanted to talk about some costume ideas. 
But first, I kind of wanted to say, as a parent, maybe I have some questions that you could ask your teenager. So starting with even, do you want to dress up this year? Is that Mm. something you're interested in? What would you like to dress up as? Um, When they're teenagers, I think they should be able to have a say in what they dress up as. But make sure you're asking the question so the night of Halloween, they don't walk out in a costume and you go, absolutely not. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Because then it might be too late. So have this conversation now so that if you need to say, "Mm, maybe let's think about this. (laughs) Maybe Mm -hmm. it's not appropriate. Maybe it would offend others you can have that conversation ahead of time where they can come up with a different costume idea because that's something that I've seen lately, Chris, I don't want to get too off topic on this, but there's almost this trend of especially people maybe that go on TV or go viral that then people start digging into their past. And a lot of times there are problematic Halloween costumes that come Mm -hmm. up that get them in trouble years and years later. And so make sure that you're asking those questions and kind of having conversations with your student to make sure it's appropriate and also maybe not offensive. Yeah. I mean, just maybe the the question, you know, would, would you be okay getting photographed in this? Mm -hmm. Um, Because that's, that's where the trouble comes if someone snaps a picture or whatever. And it's like, check out this guy or whatever. I know you can't future proof everything, you know? Right. But you know, if, if, if it is on the line, maybe, you know, that's, that opens up a great opportunity to have that, that bigger conversation about, mm-hmm. you know, um, anything that you post is no longer yours, you know, it's for this, for everyone to see. And so just, you know, that's a good, good place to reinforce that idea. Yeah. Now, here are some of my easy costume ideas. So I tried to come up with some stuff. Some stuff is trendy. Some of it's not. But also what is easy and not going to cost you a lot of money is what I'm going for. Mm. Um, One of the first things is there's a Barbie movie coming out. Maybe maybe next year. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. But you're seeing a lot of Barbie stuff right now. That's an easy one. For a girl, they can throw on some pink clothes. Barbie had a million different jobs. So honestly, you could pick anything and be Dr. Barbie or Vet Barbie or whatever. Boys could be Ken if they wanted to be the other one. That's also an easy couple costume idea. They have to walk with the stiff joints and all that. Yes, please do. (laughs) Please like don't bend your knees and have to walk on their tippy toes all night. (laughs) That's dedication to the the costume. Yeah, exactly. Now, Chris, this next one, I can't remember. Have we talked about Harry Styles on the podcast yet? I don't think so. So he's trending right now, and I don't know if it's worth a podcast episode. Maybe not. But I feel like I see people dress up as him all the time. I On TikTok every now and then I come across Harry Style parties where everyone dresses as a different costume that is also Harry Styles. So Mm. this one is big right now. And this is easy because if you've ever seen his style, it's very 70s. You he wears a feather boa sometimes. So just grab some 70s clothes, throw a Mm. feather boa on your Harry Styles. (laughs) It's pretty easy. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Uh Now and another one for maybe my more sporty people, Serena Williams, Roger Federer obviously are being talked about a lot right now with their retirements. Mm -hmm. And so you probably have a tennis type costume in your closet already that you Mm -hmm. could throw on and make that easy. Now this one I had to, Chris, you know, I had to top gun. Trolling me. (laughs) Still haven't seen it. (laughs) I'm going to continue to bring up top golf, top golf, top gun until Chris has seen it, I think is what I just decided. (laughs) Okay. So you can, you can, you can change this, Chris, but I have seen lots of top gun costumes kind of think that like, I don't know, greenish one piece flight suit. You can add some patches to it if you want. It's an easy, an easy kind of military aviators, all that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You could be Tom Cruise. If your teenager can grow a mustache, which touche as a Mm -hmm. teenager, they can grow the rooster mustache. I think that'd be a great costume. Maybe I should dress up in the Top Gun gear and then watch Top Gun. 
Yes. Yes, Chris. On Halloween. Yes. I, I think <laughs> we need to do a teen life staff watch party is what I'm hearing you say. <laughs> yes, I think so. I love it. Now, the next one is Star Wars. There have been a lot of new shows come out this year. My toddler really wanted to be Dark Vader is who is how he Dark says Vader. that. <laughs> <laughs> I said the same thing. Yes. Yeah, so, but this is another easy one. If you wanted to get a brown robe, you're Obi-Wan Kenobi. Like, it's just mm-hmm. pretty simple. Grab a lightsaber. You're good to go. So that's an easy one. Have you seen, Chris, like the inflatable costumes? Do you know what I'm talking about when I say oh, that? Oh, yeah. My my, my uh, kiddo had one. Um, I, for- I forgot I forgot what, what it was, but yeah, they're great. These are just like some of my favorite costumes, and they're easy because you throw it over clothes. But the dinosaur one is really popular. I have seen an alien abduction one where it looks like you're being abducted by an alien. Like these Mm -hmm. are just kind of funny. And then if you have a teenager who just wants to be comfortable, doesn't really want to put a lot of effort into it, there are lots of onesies out there. So a unicorn. I'm pretty sure Josh has a Chewbacca onesie somewhere in his closet. Oh, that's great. So you can just throw a onesie over your clothes, be comfortable for the night. And that's it. Yeah, I love it. Oh, wait, wait. Before we go, I'll uh, talk about the rhyming uh, oh, yes. costumes. Yes. <laughs> so I was telling Chris, somehow I have gotten, probably because of this podcast, somehow I have gotten on like Halloween costume TikTok that I get lots and lots of videos about Halloween costumes right now. And one of them are these people are doing parties that are like rhyme without reason. And so you come with either a friend or a date And those costumes rhyme, but don't go together. So some examples I've gave Chris are like a wizard and a lizard. (laughs) (laughs) What was, what was the other one that I, I can't remember now. Oh gosh, I don't remember either. Hang on. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. But I just think they're so funny. I saw someone trying to rhyme orange with something else and they couldn't. Oh, a butterfly and FBI. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Maleficent and 50 cent. So oh just these gosh. super random. Yeah. So if you're looking for a theme party theme idea, I think that could be a really fun one or, or have just, a team. Uh, yeah. Just, just buddy up and have people guess what, what, what the rhyme is. <laughs> exactly. You have people be really confused. I love it. Now for the tip, Chris, I want to continue a little bit on the Halloween theme And this is something that I saw last year that I really liked, which I think some adults get annoyed when they answer the door on Halloween and there are teenagers at their door Mm trick-or-treating. And I saw this thing that basically said teenagers have a lot of options on Halloween and a lot of ways to get into trouble. They could go to parties. They could vandalize property is kind of a big thing on Halloween. But if they are at your door trick-or-treating, that means they said no to something else to just have fun and be a kid again. That's a great perspective. Yeah. And so I just love that perspective change, that change if you're a parent and your kid wants to trick-or-treat and you're going, you're too old to trick-or-treat. But think about what else they could be doing. And if they want to be a kid for another year and dress up in a silly costume and trick-or-treat, let them. Mm -hmm. If a teenager comes to your door I mean, be like, man, I love your costume. Like, what are y'all doing tonight? This sounds so fun. I wish I could do this still. Like, I don't know. Make conversation and encourage them that they're choosing to do something fun and silly and kind of act like a kid. And they probably skipped something else that could have got them in more trouble to be there. So with that, that's a wrap on this one with all the Halloween talk. I love it. Um, if you if you liked what you heard, uh, we encourage you to subscribe to the Teen Life Podcast and follow us on social media. Um, a lot of the content that we share in here, we reinforce on our social media mm-hmm. platform. So, so check that out. Uh, give us a review on your favorite podcast app that helps connect people to what we're doing. Uh, share with a friend. Uh, tell them how much you love these topics and how much it helps you. And we will see you next week. Mm-hmm.